welcome to Hot Weekly. Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Haunt Weekly, a weekly podcast for the attraction and entertainment industry. Whether you're an actor, owner, or just plain aficionado, we aim to be a podcast for use. Yeah. And we're coming at you today with a bit of a weird topic for us. Well, it's a bit of a late topic, too. It is a bit. We're, a bit, <laughs> we're not very timely. We're, we're, we're late. We're a bit off topic. Basically... This episode is, is not good. No, I'm waiting. No, no, no. no, no. no. It's, it's just geared more towards the customers well, than towards that's, that's the true. owners. And... Yeah, we are talking about how to save money while visiting haunts. Yes. Now, here's the thing. Because we are primarily aimed at haunt owners and haunt run, people who run and work in haunts. Right. We're also going to turn it around at the end and talk about price segmentation and which of these techniques it makes sense for you to participate in. Yes. So we're going to start out from the perspective of the greedy, evil customer looking to save every penny they can, which describes us perfectly. Well, yeah, we we go <laughs> we're to poor. a lot. Of, yes, and we go to a lot of haunts. We're poor. We go to a lot of haunts. We spend all of our money haunting. We got nothing for Christmas. Basically, you know, we boiled cabbage at Christmas because we spent it all <laughs> Halloween. Okay, maybe not quite that bad. <laughs> yeah. But the point remains, if you want to learn more about our boiled cabbage eating habits, <laughs> you can follow us at Haunt Weekly on Facebook, Haunt Weekly on Twitter, or check out our beautiful website at hauntweekly.com. We're also at youtube.com slash hauntweekly. That's where all of our previous episodes are available. We're on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher as well. Feel free to follow us wherever you like to get your podcast. We try to make it as convenient for you as we can. And how was my transition? That was fine. That was fine. That was adequate. That was good. It was acceptable. I have passed yes. for the week. Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, before we get into how to save money while visiting haunts, we got conference reminders. We do. <clears throat> so I will kick things off. Coming up September 28th through the 29th in Houston, Texas, it's Scary Dad's Haunted Halloween Show Part 3, Electric Boogaloo. I, I, okay, I made that last part up. Yeah. But yes, it's at the Crown Plaza Hotel, Houston Galleria. Tons of vendors. Tickets are just $10. Hosted by the Scary Dad Podcast, NightmareRetreat.com for more information. Okay, it's September 28th. Same also, weekend. Yep. Same weekend, Arizona Haunts Haunted Swap Meet in Phoenix, Arizona at the Metro Center Mall at the Northwest Entrance. It'll be from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's hosted by the, the Arizona Haunters Forum, hauntedswapmeet.com for more info. Yeah, definitely. If you're in either of those areas, get your last minute stuff. Yeah. Go get your deals on. Yeah. Okay, coming up the weekends of October 4th and 5th and 11th and 12th. In Chicago, Illinois, it's the Lost Soul Chicago Bus Tour. Locations vary by night. Check the site to see where you're meeting up each night because each ring of haunts you visit, they have to start somewhere different, basically, because right. what it comes down to. Tours have been announced. Tons of great haunts. Just to list off a few, they're doing Basement of the Dead, Hell's Gate, Statesville Prison. They have an Indiana tour this year yep. for the first time. This is awesome with Fear Itself, which has five attractions in one location, and they're doing the Haunted Hills Hospital. The Mad Bastards! Yeah. <laughs> you Mad Bastards! That sounds like it's going to be an interesting Oh my night. god, there's I'm so, glad. <laughs> so goddamn much, it, I can't go through it all. There are after parties each night hosted by Haunted House Chicago. Two night passes, $240. Seriously guys, do the math on this. Mm -hmm. This is a deal. LostSoulsChicago.com for more information. We were we did two nights last year. Yes. Loved it. Would test we will testify <laughs> to anyone who needs encouraging to go. Yes, and I do know that they do sell out. So if yes. you are thinking of going, buy your tickets now. And here's the thing, they're more likely to sell out this year than last year. They sold out last year. They're much more likely to do it this year. Yep. Because of people like us, they got really hyped after last year. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if we were anywhere near the area or could go, we would. Be. Oh, God, yes, absolutely, yeah. in a heartbeat. Okay, November 8th and the 9th, it's Legendary Haunt Tour in Atlanta, Georgia. It will be starting at the Gwinnett Place Hotel. They'll be touring Netherworld at its new location in Atrox in Leeds, Alabama. 
among others, Legendary Haunt Tour with 2Ts.com to find out what those others are. Yes, they are still updating, so keep on, keep it, keep your eyes peeled. Yeah. Examine the situation. <laughs> All right, as we are doing this here, we want to do a quick update on what we're doing for our haunt. There has been an activity, and there will be more uh, mm-hmm. before this podcast goes live. We're recording midday-ish Sunday. We're recording early for us. Yeah. Yeah, we got the show notes ready in a timely fashion, so we get to record, like, use the heat of the day to our advantage. Right. And step inside and cool off and record, basically, is the idea. But we finally got the pass through on the bar working. We um, safety the bar, gimmicked it so it shouldn't hurt people. Yeah, <laughs> always important. It is. <laughs> we have we're starting the frame out of the bathroom, and we have figured out the slide mechanism. We had a bit of a technical challenge. We think we got it now. Yeah. We We won't know for sure until we order the part and put it all together. Yeah, and that's one of the problems now is we went from ordering, getting like a stock part to now having to buy something off of Amazon Yeah, because we're we're now getting outside of Home Depot range for this. Yeah, Uh, Yeah, because you can buy the whole door that we're going to build there. But we don't want the whole goddamn door because the whole goddamn door is safe and doesn't make a lot of noise. Well, and it's like $300, $400. We just just need need one. We just need a damn slide. It's like 40 bucks. Yeah, we just need the slide. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're going to go back out. We got an evening work session coming after dinner, probably. Mm-hmm. We're going to go, we're going to frame that out, get everything but the slide in place, make sure it will take the slide we need, then order it and affix that when it comes later this week. Right. That's the plan. Exactly. As far as the road work situation, it is still very much stalled. Um, they finished the sidewalks on the other side. They actually yeah. did one set of sidewalks on one side of the road on Monday and one on Wednesday? Yeah, sometime later in the week. It yeah. was Wednesday or Thursday. I don't remember which day. I think it but, was actually Thursday. But they have not done anything with the road itself. It is still a. It's complete. It's not even like a dirt road. Like you think dirt road, you think nice and compact and drivable. Yeah, it's more. This is more like a, a loose sand, gravel. <laughs> it's more like a, a child's sandbox. <laughs> yeah. But like clumpier dirt. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean. It's, it's, it's barely, you can drive it, but it's not advised, right. and I, I, I have walked in it briefly. It is not safe to walk, and you will twist your ankle because of the shifting sands beneath your feet. Yes. That being said, we are planning on following up with the city sometime this week. I probably will send an email again Monday or what, Tuesday um, just to ask what the fuck, um, basically, mm-hmm. and to see if there's any plans because we've already been mentioned in a couple of newspapers, right. which has me antsy. And um, flyer order would go normally will go out not this coming week but the next week. Yeah. Or well, late this week, one of the other. Yeah, we should be ordering them this week so that we can have them for the last week of September. Yeah. So we're going to be doing flyer order either like Thursday, Friday, or over the weekend, basically coming up. Yeah. <laughs> um, exactly. And and basically, we need to know if our street is going to be impassable come that weekend and come Halloween, that's the moment we have to quit. Yeah. We don't get to quit after that. No. We've got to do whatever we can. Yeah, as soon as flyers start going out, we, we have we're to, stuck. We're stuck. <laughs> I mean, we got to do what we can. I mean, I'll, right now, like I said last time, I've collected the email addresses of everyone I would need to notify if we do have to cancel abruptly. Right. I have sort of outlined a video that we would record and put up on the Bernie Baxter page. Yeah. I've done a bunch of things to prepare for it. I'm still hoping we open because I really love this theme and I love these builds we're doing. Yeah. I'm silly excited. But looking at the progress that is not being made. Yeah. I'm not an optimist. No, me either. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, it's kind of been, we need to get out and work in the haunt. And it's like, A, we're kind of ahead of where we usually are this time of year. Yeah. Even now. And B... But this bullcrap means... We, so we're trying to find our... So send us encouragement. Send us <laughs> send us encouragement. Send us positive thoughts. You know, Haunt Weekly on Twitter, Haunt Weekly on Facebook. Let us know. Give us encouragement. Say things to make us work in this ass-crack sweating <laughs> temperature to build this haunt. And also share with us what you're working on. We want to see it. We want to be inspired. Yeah, I have been enjoying uh, some of the, the the smaller haunt groups, like the haunt prop makers and the yard yeah. haunt people. Been seeing some great stuff in there. Like some of the noisier ones, like Haunters Hangout. Right. I kind of I get 
I, I like to stick my head in, but it's so busy and so noisy. I kind of like the smaller ones. Right. <clears throat> Just a personal preference. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, that's the news on Our Haunt. We have some personal news. We do. Crystal. Um, I have turned in my two-week notice at my current job, and I'm starting a new position. Starting September 30th, I believe. September 30th, yep. The um, last Monday of the month. <laughs> everything about this position is awesome. Yeah. Let's be 100% clear. This is an amazingly good move. Yeah. Much more money. Yeah. Always nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the, the really killer part, and the part that I'm kind of pissed off and jealous <laughs> about, even though I work from home, is she will have only a one and a half mile commute with no highways, no yeah. no traffic roads. Yeah, it's, it's less walkable, than five bikeable. minutes away yeah. by car. And that to me, like, I work from home. Uh -huh. So, yeah, my commute is across the hall. I get that. Right. But... It also means I shit where I eat, basically. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, and, and you have all the complexities that come with that. Right. You get none of the complexities of that. Yeah. And you still get a commute. I mean, sometimes it takes me more than five minutes to get across the hall. Let's be honest. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So, silly excited about this job. This is right. an awesome opportunity for you. It's another university. Yeah. Um, this does mean that we do have to get the haunt as finished as possible. Because usually I take... The week of opening day off, and I will not be able to do that this year. And the other thing this nixes is any big haunt trip. Yeah, so we are not taking any large trips. Um, we will have a little more time on Fridays, which is mm -hmm. nice, because I'll be getting off early on Fridays. Yeah, your new schedule is weird, but very beneficial to us. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, you work extra Wednesday, but get that time back Friday. Yeah, yeah. Do it... <laughs> Yeah, so we're not sure if we'll get out of Louisiana this year, but we might we might hit the outskirts of Texas. Well, and one, we, one thing we could do, like you mentioned previously, was, depending on where we are with our haunt, schedule a weekend gig right. to Houston. Yeah, probably still that second weekend in October. Because yeah. what we could theoretically do... I'm hoping do it's still a three-day weekend for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm spitballing here. We've not discussed this prior to this podcast. Right. <laughs> um, but one thing I was thinking we could do is plan the trip, leave Friday night, pretty much right yeah. after you get off right. your work, and then hit Fright Trail in Lafayette on the way out. Yeah. Then continue to Houston. Now, we'd be too late to go to any haunts in Houston that night. Right. But we'd have Saturday night and possibly first thing Sunday night yeah. to go check out a few things. Yeah. So if you're anywhere along that, that, that road, that, that stretch, there. Yeah. and you want us to check out your haunt, or you want well, us... there's also that one in... Um, and I, uh, the shoot, What was the one... He's at Haunt Con every year. It's on the boat. Oh, um... God damn it. It's going to hit... Out in Lake Charles. Yeah, it's out by Lake Charles. But they weren't open the last couple of years. But they're open this year. Oh, okay. The last I'd heard, they're open this year. Well, yeah, that might be... That might be another one. Anyway, <laughs> if, you're, if you're in that area and you want us to, to stop in... Or, say howdy. <laughs> yeah, or if you have time on that, uh, it looks... if. If the schedule for the fall break is the same at this college as the other one, it'll be the weekend of the 12th and the 13th. Um, you can get together with us during the day. We can record a podcast about what you do. Yeah, we can figure Just out something cool. let us know. Yeah, keep in touch. But no, silly excited about this job. It does put a crimp on the haunt this year. Because but the road work does too. Yeah, I mean, that's just <laughs> it. It may all be moot if I find out Tuesday that the road work is going through into November. Yeah. There's nothing we can do. He's putting his hands up like you can hear it. Yeah. You can hear me do this. <laughs> <laughs> I gestured loudly. <laughs> exactly. No, but it's like, yeah, we're screwed, though. It's basically we're screwed. We have to cancel. And while that frees us of the burdens of our haunt this year. Right. Um, You know, it... it, it a lot of that goes back into we really were going to be limited what we could do because of the timing of this job change. Yeah. So as much as the timing sucks, everything else is great. Yeah, it is. Um, I'm super happy and super excited about this job. I've never been happier for you. Yeah. Uh, this is great. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, first thing we want to talk about, though, we have a follow-up on last week. Last week we did the pain points of haunting. And someone, and then the reader popped, and a little reader yeah, they read listener. our podcast, you know, a <laughs> listener popped on and noted a six pain point we missed. Yes. yes We've talked my, about it before. Yes, we have. But we did not talk in the context of pain points. Uh, Derek Muehlberger uh, pointed out bathrooms. 
Yes. Especially the stinky, foul, disgusting portal. That's a lot of haunts. You know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do. even hide it. Just hang your head right now while listening to this. You know who you are. And honestly, the reason we for I forgot about it when drafting the show notes mm -hmm. was because we never used them. Yeah. Like, to give you an example of, of how desperate we do this, when we go to Rise... Yeah. Now, yeah, it's an hour drive. It's about a 45-minute drive. So usually by the time between all the energy drinks we're pounding on the way up there, usually by the time we get to Rise, we need to use the restroom. Mm -hmm. There is a gas station right there at the exit. Well, and we Rise doesn't have portal lights. And that's just it. When we do that, even though Rise has some of the best haunted bathrooms I've seen, they yeah. have real full bathrooms. Yeah. But we still avoid it. Yeah. 13th Gate has portalettes, but they have the casino that we mentioned previously. Yeah. We just go into the casino. And no um, one tell the casino what we're doing, by the way. Yeah, exactly. No one fucking tip them off or I'll break your neck. No, no, no. Well, we don't do that. No, I'll make um, you use the portalettes at 13th Gate. <laughs> yeah. The only place that I know that I've used a portalette recently is New Orleans Nightmare. Yeah. They have the row of them. Yeah, and, and portalettes are sometimes, unfortunately, un unavoidable because the buildings in which haunts are often put in no. rarely have adequate restrooms for a crowd for a haunt. They're usually meant as warehouses. They're usually meant as right. stores that never have a lot of people at once. So they're only going to have, you know, maybe a men's and a women's, and that's about it. Yeah. And the result of that is when you get hundreds or thousands of people there at once, that, there's just not enough real bathrooms. Right. When you get as many customers as you want to have. Yeah. <laughs> you're not going to have enough. Um, now, the, the evil, in, evil Visions in Monroe. Yes. When we went to their restrooms. Yes. They had them. Um, they had, they had real, they took us through the actor runs yeah, go the use rabbit the runs. Bathroom, the rabbit runs. And the only reason we had to go to the bathroom there was we drove two hours. Or what was it, two, three hours? Uh, we drove a long ways to get there. It was there. two and a half to three hours away from where we were. And we got downtown Monroe and started scouting for bathrooms. And downtown Monroe, apparently they roll up the sidewalks at six. Yeah, exactly. There was nothing open. No. It was the only thing open anywhere. But we had to ask them, where can we go and get food? Because by the time we left, we were hungry. Yeah. And we weren't going to do the two and a half hour drive back on an empty stomach. Nope. So anyways, uh, <clears throat> yeah, definitely, definitely this is a pain point that a lot of customers, maybe not every customer, but a lot of customers will deal with. Right. <laughs> Seriously, though, invest in good, clean, good, clean restrooms. Portalettes may be necessary, but here's the thing. You can have them, you can set in your contract to have them serviced as often as you want. Yeah. Ideally, I would have them serviced every morning of the, when you're opening that night. Yeah. It, it makes such a huge difference. It does. Especially as you get later in season when they're getting more use. You might be able to get away with fewer cleanings in the beginning. Right. And here's the thing. I actually looked into it. Um, it's not that much more. Right. Um, at least according to the sites I saw, it... it, it, it it's usually around a hundred dollars base price for like a month mm -hmm. to rent a portal it. Yeah. Um, or a hundred. I'm sorry, it's 175 base price, and that's doing service once a week. Yeah. Um, you can get more for like 250 or 300 or so. So yeah, that's an increase, especially if you got five, six portalets or whatever. But the benefit of a really good, clean smelling, yeah. nice portalet versus a stank, nasty one. Right. It's a huge difference from those two things. Oh yeah. Yeah, whenever we go to Renfest, there's an area that's full of portalettes, and then there's a couple that are off the beaten path. Yeah. Those are the ones I like to go to. It's well worth the time and attention. Yeah. And also, don't forget to include wheelchair and handicap accessible portalettes. A lot of haunts forget that. Yeah. Um, don't do that. And yeah, it's another great pain point to minimize. It's a very, 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 very good point, Derek. Thank you for that. Uh-huh. All right. So... Here's the deal. One of the things we talk a lot about on this show is how to get more money from customers. Yeah. We love focusing on that because we like our industry succeeding and thriving. Yes. Now we want to do the opposite. Yeah. Take it from the customer side. Because here's the thing. As we know, going to haunts is expensive. Now, here's the deal. We know both because of the podcast and the reviews and everything, and the, we run our own haunt, everything we do, most haunts, in the, especially in the area, would happily let us in for free. Yeah. We don't do that bullshit. No. We do not do that because we believe in supporting the haunts with our dollars. Right. We are adamant about it. Right. I, I'm not going to get into like a Bugs Bunny-esque, yes, no, yes, no battle of the ticket booth. No, no, no. But 
if I can buy the tickets online beforehand, so that way they don't get a choice to comp us, yeah. I'm going to do it. Yeah. And that also, you know, we don't have to disclose free tickets and haul reviews that we do. No. And, um, it, you know, we have a lot of artist friends. And if we, you know, say we like that painting or we yeah, want we you to take them. photos, we buy you. Well, yeah, exactly. We pay them for it. Exactly. We, we do that with it. our artist friends. We do that with our photographer friends. We do that with our burlesque friends. We don't try to get into their shows for free. No. We do, and we do it for our haunt friends. It's that easy. We pay for the fucking art we enjoy. Exactly. It's that simple. But yeah, it's still expensive. <laughs> yes, it is. This is a very expensive ethical hill to die on. I'm not yes. going to lie to you. Yes, we realize that we are we are choosing to do this to ourselves. We are bankrupting ourselves on the account of ethics. <laughs> yes. But the average ticket price for a major haunt is between twenty dollars, and it can go up to fifty dollars or more for like many of the like the multi haunt attractions and whatnot. Uh, locally, Scout Island is sixty dollars a ticket. It's got a ten dollar off sale right now. Right. Um, you want to do everything at Rise? You want to do all three attractions there, and you should. Yes. It's fifty. It's fifty dollars. Mortuary, just one haunt. It's 30 bucks. Yeah, Jonathan may be a little pissed about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, okay, we're going to, we'll come back to that maybe <laughs> if we have time. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the question we have is how do you get more haunt for your dollars? <laughs> and this is without having to form a review team and try to get in for free and piss off every haunt owner in the region. Yeah. This is how do you do it ethically? Right. And that's what this episode is about. Uh, so we wanted to share the secrets we've learned over the past 20-odd years, almost nearly 20 years of going to yeah. haunts. Yeah. We've been haunting attendees for as long as we've been haunters. Yeah, exactly. So, and we'll talk about what we've learned over the time. Mm -hmm. All right, first tip. And this is, I think, the biggest of the tips. This is really the one you should hone in on. Get on every newsletter and social media platform you can find. If a local haunt has an email newsletter, yeah. get on it. Just to now, immediately. Yeah. If you're not on it already, get on it. In fact, get on it with multiple email addresses. <laughs> Do whatever you got to to make sure you get them. Yes. Because um, here's the thing. like Locally, New Orleans Nightmare House, getting back on them, they are a haunt that their tickets go up to $30. Right. But every year so far, every year that they've been open locally, so, so two, two, you know, two, <laughs> yeah. they've had a $13 sale. Yeah. Like some random day, I think in August, they'll say for 13 minutes, all tickets are $13. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you think I'm in line for that? You bet your aching ass I'm in line for that. Yes. Um, Similar vein, we get 13th gate off every year, about 25% off. Right. And that's through emails. That's through their emails. Yeah. Yeah. The Sun Special yeah. is just through their emails. Yeah. Rise, same deal. It's uh, usually uh, either 15 to 20, 20% off. Yeah. Um, yeah. And through the emails, um, haunts usually give a bigger discount mm -hmm. to people who sign up for their email newsletter than they do for people who follow their Facebook page. Exactly. And well, it's any direct to customer thing. Right. Because if it's your email or your text messaging, text messaging works too. Yeah. You'll get the same, usually the same discounts, but it's the fact that they have a direct line to you, not through an intermediary like Facebook or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, that is the big one. Usually we can, I can get 25 to 50% off just through that. Yeah. And that's a huge savings. It is. So if I'm ready to buy in August, because there's like at least six haunts a year I know I'm going to. Right. I don't get to avoid these haunts, that we are avoiding mortuary this year from the looks of it. Yeah, I think uh, so. Because I can no longer justify the price. Um, the long and short of it is, you know, usually if, if we're able and ready to buy in August, all into right about now, right about now is the cutoff. Because a lot of haunts opened up this year early for uh, uh, Friday the 13th. Right. But usually it goes through the mid of September, is what I would say. Yeah. So usually right about now is when things are starting to end. Um, that coupon watching and being ready to jump on those deals saves you a ton of cash. Yeah. And and I would even start watching out for them in like June, July. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it, um, the thing, I, I haven't seen them earlier than that. No. Well, usually before June, July, if the haunt has an escape room, they're pimping those. Yeah. So, and here's another tip. If you're planning a haunt trip to another area, do the same thing for those haunts. Yeah. If you know you're going to Atlanta or to Chicago or Houston or wherever right. in advance, 
join those haunts that you want to go to newsletter get active in their facebook all that stuff and during the summer jump on the deals when they pop up yep um the earlier the better and here's the thing though even if you miss like even if you start doing this now you can often get mid-season discounts right haunts will typically offer smaller but still pretty good deals 10 to 20 percent as the season goes on so jump on whatever deal you can when you see it <laughs> and like I, and like we said the best offers are typically sent direct to consumer uh, that's email text message any i don't know if any haunts do direct mail yeah but, i don't i don't know but either or but you know it's all about direct to consumer stuff yeah um yeah, and also, don't forget to look for other coupons, too. Mm -hmm. A lot offer soda can discounts or sometimes flyers you can find in stores that offer X amount off. Right. Cross haunt promotions are becoming bigger. Um, these aren't usually as good of a deal as usually talking only a couple of bucks off, but every little bit, right? Yeah. If you're down to this, you're down to this. Yeah. <laughs> Number two. This is going to sound contradictory compared to what I just said, but it's true. Do not buy tickets online. Yeah. Most haunts, because they use Fear Ticket or Haunt Pay or something like that, mm -hmm. charge a service fee to buy tickets. Mm -hmm. Now, I think this is anti-consumer as hell, and I've said as much in the online ticketing one we did. Right. Um, seriously, why are we getting our ethics and our business lessons from Ticketmaster and Live Nation? Yeah. And yeah, our fees aren't as high as Ticketmaster and Live Nation. Right. But the point of the matter is, everybody has the ability to buy a ticket at a ticket booth at a haunt. Yeah. Which means you just made the internet the expensive way to buy the ticket. Yes. I mean, we did a whole episode on this, episode 42. Check it out. Um, but it, what all this means is the, chi the cheapest way to buy a ticket broadly and in general, usually, is at the ticket booth. Yes. And to take up your time. Yeah. Take up valuable time of probably someone who works at that haunt yeah. and being paid. Yeah, and not only time, but also resources. Because could you do something else with that land that your ticket booth's on? Or could you do something else with, you know, the money you sink into the ticket printing system and all that? I mean, yeah, yeah, your, your, your resources are not being well spent that way. Yeah, I want kiosk like they have at the movie. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. I would love kiosk. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. that, that sounds awesome. <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're, you're eating, as a customer, you're eating the haunt's time, but saving money. Yeah. It makes zero sense to me. Mm -hmm. And I really, really hate doing this. Now, of course, there is an exception, and it's item one. Yes. <laughs> Which is, if you find a good discount. Right. Here's the thing. It's worth eating a $3 fee if you're saving $10 a ticket. Yes. That's just logic. I mean, I yep. can't. if you can't figure out why that's true... Learn some math. <laughs> just, <laughs> just just any math. <laughs> if you can't understand that 10 is greater than 3, go learn math. <laughs> yeah. You don't need to be listening to this podcast. You need to be hooked on a hooked on phonics or something. I don't know. <laughs> they do math. Uh mathnasiums, I think. Oh, is yeah, what they... go go somewhere else. You don't need to be here. Yeah. Yeah, ticket booths do not have coupon codes. <clears throat> and here's the thing, a lot of crappy haunts and will do this thing where they will give you a discount on an online ticket purchase that just barely, by the tiniest smidge, covers the fees. Yeah. That is such a jerk move. It is. That is such a jerk move. But still, if you're not able to find really good discounts, I mean, I would say solid discounts, yeah. never buy tickets online, buy from the ticket booth, S suck it up and talk to people. I mean, yeah. that's all there is to it. Yeah. I don't know how else to help you. Number three, group rates. If you have a group of people that like to go to haunts or you all enjoy haunts, collaborate. Yeah. Look into getting group rates. <clears throat> Here's the thing. The amount you need to qualify as a group varies from haunt to haunt. I have seen it be as high as 20, which I think is what Mortuary does, but I've also seen it be as low as five. Right. Which is nice because that's a family of four plus a friend, you know. Yeah, there, there. You, it's easy to get now. The, the average seems to be around ten. Yeah. Which is bigger than a family, but it's still an amount you can probably get together. Yeah, and <laughs> we haven't done this personally, but I think it would be cool just to like advertise. Hey, we want to visit a lot of lot of haunts. We want to get a group together so we can get group discounts for all of these. Join us. 
Yeah. You know, you can go with strangers. This and is still this be is your buy-in. Rate. This is what it takes, and yeah. you will save money because we're getting five to ten dollars off each ticket because we're getting the group rate. Yeah. And the Han is benefiting because they know ideally when this group is going to arrive and they can prepare and get them right. in. Everybody wins. Yeah. <clears throat> So, yeah, if you have a modest-sized group, if you have a group that's five or larger, mm-hmm. look into this. And like I said, you may need to get up to 10 to get the most haunts, or maybe even, like I said, 20 in some cases. But it's probably a doable amount with a little work. Yeah. And the savings can be pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, group rates at some haunts are really, really cheap. Yeah. So, focus on that. If it's only like a couple of bucks off, it's probably not worth the effort, the energy. Probably not. But if it's a significant discount, it may be worth trying to get a dozen of your best friends to go in with you. Yeah, exactly. Just saying. Keep an eye open for it. And in a similar vein, look for tours. Mm -hmm. Uh, We talked about Lost Souls and the conference reminders. Um, But there are other tours elsewhere in the country. There seems to be a growing trend. Which yeah. I think is awesome, and I hope it does grow. I hope it grows. I hope one, one comes here. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know if it will, though. We're not geography. saturated enough. Yeah, I, I don't think it'll happen here. Probably not, but it'd be nice. Yeah. Well, it'd be nice to have ones, you know. And, you know, if we had found one in Atlanta to oh, take us to so all great. of those haunts, that would have been nice. <laughs> or one, you know, in Texas, like... So that whenever we go there, we don't have to do all the research and yeah. the planning and all of that. And pull out the Google Maps with layers and all that crap that yeah. I'm probably going to have to do if we do the Houston trip, even this year. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Haunt tours are expensive up front. Mm-hmm. Like I said, uh, Lost Souls is 240 for a two-night ticket. Yeah. But when you do the math on what you're getting, especially considering you're usually getting better than VIP access at these. You definitely are. <laughs> you save a ton of money. Yeah. And they're handling transportation, planning. They'll usually provide some kind of entertainment. They do giveaways. You get uh, after hours type show. Yeah. You get all kinds of neat stuff. And it's at a price that's usually cheaper than just going to the haunts individually. Yeah. It's a big money saver. It is. It, it might, you might cry. It's a situation where it's, it's buy one, cry once on the ticket price. Yeah. But, but if you do it the other way, it's... Buy six, cry, you know. <laughs> yeah, all buy, the way. Buy, buy, <laughs> cry it forever. I mean, yeah. Because not only are you paying more, but you're you're setting yourself up for a logistical nightmare. That let them handle the logistical yeah. nightmare. Let them handle it. Um. Yeah. It, you spend more money at once, but you save money and headache overall. It's a great way to go. Mm-hmm. I, I found that to be so useful. Number five, go on off nights. Now, we generally do this anyway. Yeah, this is a big one for us. Yeah, this is huge for us because we try to go, not opening night, we're not dicks. Yeah. But early Al- season. Yeah, although traditionally we do go to mortuary opening night because traditionally they have offered a discount that night. Yeah. And that's kind of what has me a little miffed at mortuary is there are no significant or quality discounts. Like usually I'm in the email newsletter. Yeah. Usually they send out some kind of coupon code yeah. or something. Uh, no, it's flat thirty dollars. Yeah, for a haunt that I know can't expand, for a haunt that is just one attraction, and it's less than fifteen minutes. Yeah, to get it's through. less than fifteen minutes to get through. I can't justify it. I mean, I love the fact that we've been every year the mortuary's been open. Yeah, I love that streak. Yeah, <laughs> but it's going to break this year probably unless something magical happens and makes the numbers line up for me. Yeah, because we have other things we want to prioritize this year and financially. Yeah, and with all of the changes going on, it's it's that much more important. Exactly. <clears throat> I mean, we've already got tickets to Rise, Thirteenth Gate, uh, New Orleans Nightmare, and we'll soon have our Scout Island tickets. Yeah, but. We do not have the mortuary tickets at this time. Yeah. So, but yeah, we try to go on off nights because long story short is we get shorter lines. Yeah. We get the same show. There's less interference with our build. Right. Once we get to that, the heat of the season, if you will. Yeah. We're usually, ah, da, 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 hair on fire, build the facade, build the facade. Damn it. Not like that. Yeah. <laughs> We're running around doing crazy stuff. And the long and short of it is, it's not good nights for us to go to haunts because we need all that time for the finish our build. Right. 
earlier in the season, it's less interference. Things are calmer for us. It works better for us. Yes. So what is an off night for us, you might ask? Thursdays. Yeah. Thursdays are an awesome time to visit haunts. Yeah, if your haunt offers Thursday nights, we will probably be there on the first Thursday night of the season. Yes, that's, and thank you that, for doing it. That's our sweet spot. Now, if that fails, if they don't have Thursday, we will try to go to a Friday night early in season. Yeah. Less interference with our build because Friday night's kind of a shot night in a lot of ways, anywho. Yeah, we can get some small stuff done, but we've worked a full day. And, and then by the time we're able to really get started, it's dark and yeah. neighbor noise and all that. So it's Friday night is what we usually go. Yeah. But it'll be an early in season one. Yeah. Typically uh, late September, early October. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we just, we like having shorter lines. We like that we can get these haunt visits knocked out. Right. Uh, very quickly, which is something we can't do. Um, if we're spending an hour and a half in a queue. No, exactly. Um, you know, so we're having to look not just at the financial cost, but the time cost here. Yeah. And so from both a finance and a time cost perspective, this saves us both. And it's saving us both because more and more haunts are implementing per night pricing. Yes. Um, and you can save a whole hell of a lot. Um, by going on and off. Now, I'm give an example locally, New Orleans Nightmare. Okay, say you missed the $13 sale. Right. To you blew the pooch. You screwed it. You missed it. What are you going to do? You still want to go. Well, they still charged $13 on their opening night, Friday the 13th. They yeah. still charged $13. Yeah. Okay, okay, but that's past, Jonathan. That's past. Dude, this is going live on a Sunday, on Monday the 16th. And that's right. gone, right? Yeah. We missed it. Oh, well... This coming weekend is twenty dollars. Yeah, and then on Hall and then it goes up to Halloween night, which is thirty. Well, twenty nine ninety nine. Screw you for that. <laughs> it's thirty bucks. You're yeah. getting thirty. Yeah, <laughs> but it's thirty bucks. So it's one of those deals where yeah, you can save you know a third of the price right. just by going earlier in season. Yeah. The other thing is that I found interesting is that a lot of places will also offer cheaper rates on Sundays. Yes. Not many haunts do the Sunday open. Yeah. But the ones that did in the Alabama area, they were all cheaper to go on Sunday. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not 100% sure why, but they yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And Eastern State Pen with Terror Behind the Walls, they do something very similar. It's $24 to go on the 20th of September. Yep. And it's $44 to go on the 26th of October. Yeah. You do the math. Yeah. <laughs> One of these things is less than the other. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the math. <laughs> yeah. Maddox. So don't be picky about your dates. Right. Go on off nights. Uh, basically, a lot of these haunts with these prices are banking on the people that are like, hey, what do you want to do tonight, Brain? Yeah. Same thing we do every night. Let's go to a haunted house. <laughs> yeah. And just impulsively going and not yeah. thinking about the price until they get there. If you're being smart and strategizing based upon price, you can save a lot of money. Don't be impulsive. Yeah. Number six, bundle haunt trips. Yes. This is a huge one for us. It doesn't really save ticket money usually, but it does save on every other expense, including gas, food, and possibly hotel. Right. Um, target areas and hit at least two to three haunts in a night. We have managed four. We did that in Atlanta. We hit right. four haunts in a strange area even Yeah. in a night. We were dead tired when we were done with that. That was probably one of the most exhausting evenings of my life. Right. <laughs> but we did it. Now, this does require planning, like I said. If you, mm -hmm. This is one of the reasons I love those haunt tours. It yeah. takes the planning part. My advice, get a little skills with Google Maps going on. Yeah. Get a little... You Not much. You don't have to yeah. go crazy. You don't have to be like a wizard. But get some skills on. I would also reach out to anyone you know in the area. Oh, yes. And ask them for the ones that aren't on Google. Because there are... There, you know, we showed up at one haunt in Alabama, and they said, Oh, are you going to Camp Blood after here? We're like... What the heck is that? Why haven't we heard of this? Because it wasn't on any of the maps or any of the searches. Yeah. So um, check with your locals also. And if you don't know anybody in the area, ask on the haunt groups. Yeah. Get advice. And that'll also get advice on which haunts you want to go to, which you might want to skip. Right. And which you can easily hit in a night. Because Yeah. And this is best to do on off nights uh -huh. because you can squeeze far more haunts in if you don't deal with queue lines. Right. 
And we used to um, be able to hit Rise and 13th Gate on a Thursday night. Yeah. We haven't been able to do that in a while because Rise has built up more attractions. Yeah, and, Rise has gotten yeah. three things and it's pretty much an all night deal now. Yeah, exactly. Which is good for them, yeah. good for us, you know. But We enjoy it, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, but now those are our two separate nights. Yeah. Which I mean, and going back to what we talked about, we could theoretically do Baton Rouge Fright Trail. Yeah. Exactly. On the Houston trip, that's probably what we will do. Okay. Um, but yeah. Now, you can screw yourself on ticket price if you have to buy VIP, but here's the thing. It is cheaper to do the $10 or whatever upgrade to VIP than it is to get a hotel for a night and have to come back at shit tomorrow. Right. So think of it that way. Yeah. Um, you know, basically, don't do like we did when we were visiting either Evil Visions in Monroe or Terror on the Coast. These are haunts that are about... They were hours away, and we just went to them. Yeah. That was stupid, in hindsight. Well, they were the only things in the area. Yeah. And we hadn't been to them before. That's why we went to them. Lessons were learned. Mm-hmm. And basically, our trips in Shreveport and Atlanta were much more successful in that yeah. regard. I mean, even with Shreveport, with having to cover what felt like half the fucking state. Yeah. We did. still managed to get three. Yeah. Yeah. Just saying. And three, well, three and one with two attractions. Yeah. Just saying, you know, it can be done. Seven, I know no one's actually subscribed to, looked at, or used Groupon. In a minute. In a minute, and this is the last one. Uh, but here's the deal. Uh, check it out. Mm -hmm. Do a quick search. Um, Groupons are typically bad deals for haunts, but they are great for the customers. Mm -hmm. um, if a haunt does one, take advantage of it. It'll probably be the best deal you can actually get. Usually, these are the best deals you're going to get. Right. Um also, your local area has a publication that does coupons and things like that. Yeah. Ours, it's called The Clipper. Mm -hmm. Don't know what it's called in your area, but it's a little magazine. It's mailed out. We get it every Thursday. Yeah. Um, basically, uh, look through that and see if there are any good coupons there. Yeah. I wonder if we're the only house that like really enjoys getting that and looking to see what's new. <laughs> I think we might be, but it's been <laughs> useful for us. Yeah, it has. It's introduced us to a lot of new restaurants. Now, I do hesitate to suggest this one. This is why it's the last one. Uh-huh. Because <clears throat> they're often not good for the customer. Right. Groupons often come with a lot of restrictions. You definitely want to take the time to read the fine print. Mm -hmm. They can often only be used on certain nights. Right. Or at certain times. Mm -hmm. Um, And they can cause long lines and problems. Hell's Gate. Yeah. Had a very famous problem with that the very first year they opened. Right. They ran a group on to generate interest. They generated some interest. They did. A lot of interest, and they could not handle the capacity. In fact, they couldn't even handle the capacity in getting people from the parking area to the haunt. Right. Um, so, yeah, that generated a lot of negative reviews and ill will against them. Right. Now they seem to, they've rebounded. Yes, they fixed all of that. They've rebounded. But my God, was it a mess when it happened. Yeah. Yes, we uh, covered it on the news. Mm -hmm. I, I tried to find the episode, but I couldn't find it. Yeah. Yeah, and also, sometimes the deals themselves are not very good. Usually, or very often, they'll be the best deals you can get, but do pay careful attention to how it actually is, and take a moment to actually compare the deal in the Groupon to the actual website prices, Right. and make sure that Groupon or isn't inflating the ticket price to make the savings appear greater. Yeah. Check all that out. All right, so now we're going to flip this around. We've talked about a bunch of techniques and approaches used to save um, customers money in the next 10 minutes. Let's flip it around and see which of these haunt owners should do. And this all comes down to price segmentation. Yep. And the basics of price segmentation is this, is every customer is willing and able to spend a certain amount of money. Mm -hmm. If the guy that's able to spend $25, you know, is charged $15, you've left $10 on the table. Right. Likewise, if the guy is able to pay $25 or willing to pay $25, and there's no way for him to pay less than, say, $40, you left $25 on the table. Yeah. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Yep. You've left his money completely on the table. So you want to make, so the idea is you find ways to charge different prices, different customers. VIP tickets are one of the more common things that are done here. To get more money from those that are willing and able to pay, but also give deals and access to those who can't. Right. It's simple. Now, price segmentation isn't just that. It's also a lot of this stuff, too. 
So which of these are valid, I would say, and wise price segmentation strategies for haunt owners? First off, the, um, the direct marketing coupons. Yeah. This is a must. Yeah. If your haunt is not doing this, why not? You, you're missing out. Uh, basically, what you want is your customers to give you a means to reach out to them. Yeah. Email, text message, direct mail, whatever. Right. Um, and in exchange for them trusting you with that very personal information and that ability to contact them, you're giving them a discount to justify it. Yeah. Um, and here's the other thing is those early sales, when you're putting those ticket prices on discount wait like September and August, some of those are not going to be redeemed. No. Some of those are literally free money to you. Right. They're not going to be redeemed to no fault of your own. They yeah. might forget they bought it. I straight yeah. up forgot I bought 13th Gate tickets. I'm glad I searched for them before I went to go buy them. <laughs> yeah. I straight forgot. I don't know how, but I did. Yeah. They might forget. They might totally forget they bought them. Yeah. They, they might move uh, suddenly. Yeah. Or they have might... something come up that they can't go yeah. when they were planning on going. Exactly. Things happen. So they are taking a risk and you know a certain percent and maybe a low percent, maybe only be like small single digits, mm -hmm. but a certain percent will never be redeemed and that's free money. Yeah. But more importantly, it's a reward for the most loyal fans, for the people that trusted you with their information, the people that were interested enough in you to stay connected to you year round. Yeah. This is a reward for them. Basically, this is saying you are the loyal, you are the repeat customers, we want to keep you. Here's 25% off. Yeah. Here's 20% off. Whatever. Yeah. And if, um, you know, I was just, this literally just popped into my brain. Uh-oh. <laughs> this is never good. It is not. But, so, if you wanted more social media interaction, couldn't you reward the ones who get the little gold yeah. sticker, the the most... Yeah, the, the top fan or whatever. Top fan yeah. things. Sure reward them with something because they're they're actively helping your page stay alive now i will caution you about that is that people sometimes get top fan when they're complaining about yeah make ellie, sure it's not that <laughs> ellie is a top fan for battle bots right because she literally trolled the battle bots facebook page bitching when duck lost um, last that, season last season oh it was, it was a nightmare she got a top fan it was hilarious it was so be mindful of that but other than that yeah it's a good idea mm -hmm. um so yeah basically this gives people a reason to share the information and basically if you're emailing people and you're not offering coupons you're not offering deals then you're just spamming them. You're yeah. not giving them anything for their attention. Mm -hmm. Give them something. Reward them. Yeah. All right. Number two, definitely go with group rates and tours. Yes. These are amazingly useful. Um, now, we separate these two when talking about the customers because they were kind of different things for the customers. But for, um, for you as a haunt, they're basically the same thing. You're accepting a discount on your price for the comfort of knowing that a group of X size will show up at X time. Yeah. That's worth it. Yes. And if there is a way so that you know when the groups are showing mm -hmm. up, like if it's a tour or something, yeah. be sure to block out that time somehow. Let your, your regular customer knows, your walk-ins know that, hey, this is going to be a busy time. Yeah. Especially if it's going to be something that will kill your throughput. Yeah. I mean, if it's going to be a group of like, I would say over a hundred or so, that's going to block up your line and not yeah. let it move. Um, either A, alternate, right, which is something you can do, or B, shut down your damn haunt. Yeah. Because <laughs> you can't have your regular paying haunt customers stand there for 30 minutes or more because your throughput's 200 per hour and you just had a group of a hundred show up. Yeah. And I mean, we have, we have been in this position where... We were in line to go into a haunt. A group of over a hundred from another haunt showed up. I'm not going to name the haunts, but they showed up and got to the front of the line as as haunters usually do. Out of courtesy, yeah. Give that courtesy, but that meant that everybody who had been waiting for 45 minutes an hour already just now got jumped in front of. Yeah. It sucked, and by a very, very large group. Yeah, we we wound up leaving and coming back a different night. We we were uh, not sure if we were going to come back. Yeah. So yeah, 
You may want to restrict the days that you allow tours and allow group rates. Right. You probably don't want them showing up on the weekend before or Halloween night. Right. Yeah. And in fact, if you've got, if you're open on a Thursday or can open on a Thursday or Sunday, then have group sales those days. Yeah, exactly. This can be an excellent opportunity to funnel people to your less busy times. Right and create a little more parity across your days. Yeah. So if you use this correctly, it could be a tool both for controlling the flow of your haunt, but also get a lot of upfront money. Yeah. Three, maybe, and this is a weak maybe, do the day segmentation. Yeah. Now here's the thing, if you have a practical need for it, yeah. if your weekend before Halloween or your Halloween day are just crushed, Yeah. And, which we hope everybody's is. But you don't have the capacity to do it. Right. Then yes, you have to find a way to shunt some of those people to your less busy nights. Mm -hmm. I get that. Price can be a powerful motivator for doing it. I'm not going to get too upset about it. The move to me still feels anti-consumer though. Yeah. When you're telling, and we saw this in New Orleans Nightmare, where people were coming up to the ticket booth. Yeah. And were surprised by the ticket price. Yeah, because they had so many prices last year it was confusing it was now they've paired it back a lot it's a lot simpler this time around, yeah which is good yeah because and that's the other thing is if you're going to do this jesus christ uh, two or three prices is all you need yep don't don't do like 16 fucking prices where i need to get an abacus out and try to figure out which day i'm going yeah it's like this, like something. If you buy it between seven and eight p.m., it's... you get ten dollars less than if you buy it at eight oh one. No, don't but do if, that. but if you buy it at eight oh three, there's a five dollar discount. In effect. Yeah, don't yeah. Don't, don't play yeah. stupid games like that. No, please. If, don't. if you have to do the price segmentation, you probably only really need two prices. Yeah, but threes that way you have a super cheap day, normal days, and. Like higher, like higher price days. Yeah. And that's like the traffic tax, like how some cities have the, it's a $5 toll to take your car in the city because this is the congestion area. Right. So if you're taking your car into the congestion area, you're going to pay out the wazoo for it. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that will work fine. But another tip is to consider selling forever tickets on your site. Because one of the things I do find frustrating is when I have to pick the day I'm going to haunt. Yeah. And if it's a local haunt, that's frustrating because I could show up, I could rock up any day. Yeah. I don't know when's going to be the best for me. Right. But basically, if I have to pick the day I'm going, now I'm having to schedule my haunt around your schedule, not mine. Yeah. And that kind of sucks. Well, and we have to coordinate with three people at that point mm -hmm. on, you know, weeks, months in advance instead of just, hey, we're going now. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, but the, I like the idea of a ticket that is bought on the Haunt website being good for any day. Yeah. Um, and what you can do is make it so that that ticket is the max price ticket. Mm -hmm. And if people want the discount, they have to go to the ticket booth. Yeah. And go that day. Um, it's potentially, this is potentially a necessary evil. I'm not fond of it. I actually really hate it as a customer. But I also, as a haunt owner and as someone who deals with this problem right. of having everybody show up on the same fucking night. I know. I'm sympathetic. Yeah. Yeah. We try. And, and we, I, think, I think we do pretty good with the promotion that if you don't have kids and you don't have to come on Halloween, yeah. come on the other if two days. If you don't have a specific reason to be here on Halloween, come to Friday or Saturday. Yeah. It's the same show, same haunt. There's no trick-or-treat area. Big whoop. And there's no line. Usually. There's also no line. You'll be At least in and, not a not a thirty minute line. No, you'll be in and out like that. Yeah. All right. Do not <laughs> now we're in the knots, mm -hmm. do other coupon marketing. I am per, I, my my degree is in advertising. Yeah. Background in marketing. I am against coupon marketing, pretty like broad coupon marketing. Very, very strongly. I'm fine with transactional ones. You give me your email, I give you a discount. Right. That's transactional. Yes, that's this is, an even exchange. Yeah, this is papering coupons into the world, whether it's on flyers or the soda can thing or whatever. Yeah. Rewarding fans for finding a flyer or bringing in a soda can is not the same as rewarding them for giving you an email address. Right, or for, like, 
signing up a friend. I yeah. haven't seen that ever, but you know, yeah. maybe you should think about that. It does nothing to build loyalty. <laughs> yeah. It just lowers your price artificially. Yeah. And basically, the only re the reasons to do it, one is that it can be useful in determining the effectiveness of your marketing. If you see a lot of people redeeming these flyers, you know the flyers are getting out there and people are used to using them. Right. That can be kind of cool. The same as with the ads in the Clippers. One of the reasons they yeah. have coupons with that is people redeem the coupons. They know this customer came from the Clipper. Yeah, and I think that that works better with places that are new. Yeah. But if you're if you're an established one, you definitely should not be doing no. this. No, and the problem is coupon marketing is literally addicting. Yeah, there are a lot of places out there that started doing coupon marketing, and now nobody goes there without a coupon. Yeah, because uh, a lot know, of theme the, parks have this problem. Yeah, exactly. Because you know, if you bring one of the special cans, it's five dollars off. Well, then your price is five dollars off. Yeah. Just drop the price. Just drop the price and stop doing the goddamn promotion. Yeah. It's that easy. Um, and here's the thing, there are other ways you can track rather than the, the coupon codes. Right. There are surveys, landing pages, etc. Handing out coupons to people who give you nothing in return, mm -hmm. it does it just lowers your price, basically. Like you said, it just makes your haunt cheaper. Have we ever done um an episode on surveys and what should be on them and how to I do that? I thought we had, but okay. All right. But anyway. Anyway. And the last one we're going to talk about right now as we wrap up, because we're running low on time, yep. is don't do Groupon. <laughs> for the love of Jesus, don't. Groupons are for businesses at best. At best. Yeah. Even this is a weak argument. Are mm -hmm. best for businesses with repeat customers, not haunts. Your customers are coming once a year, almost always. Right. All Groupon does is lower your price. It can't really help drive traffic. And one of the things is, especially now that Groupon's kind of fallen off the radar for a lot of people, it's not getting your name to new people. No. It's it's not getting you out and in front of people that you would have had otherwise. Basically, all it's doing is giving the people that are savvy enough to search for it right. a discount that they didn't earn. Mm -hmm. They didn't give you the email address. They didn't give you the money. Yeah, exactly. It, 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 it's a crap deal. No. You're better off investing the money that you would lose on a Groupon, which you will lose a considerable amount in traditional marketing. Buy your radio spots, buy your TV spots, buy your newspaper ads, flyer, yeah. paper, do whatever you got to. But don't Groupon. Nope. Well, that's all I have on that subject. Um, did we miss anything in the show notes we went through? I don't think so. I think so, that covered everything. I think we did pretty good. Yeah. Well, on that note, everyone, thank you very much for joining us for the past damn near an hour. We greatly appreciate your time. Hope you learned something. Hope there's some conversation taking place. And if you want to have that conversation with us, you can do it at Haunt Weekly on Twitter, Haunt Weekly on Facebook, or at HauntWeekly.com. We have a contact us form. Yeah. You can reach out to us there. You can also find us at youtube.com slash hauntweekly. That is our YouTube channel with all the previous episodes available for easy access. And do not forget that you can find us wherever finer podcasts are distributed. Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes, etc., 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 etc. On into the night. Yeah. Well, until next time, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this was Haunt Weekly, episode number 198, talking about ways to save money while visiting haunts. We will see you guys next week.